Pete Collins with the Kelby Media Group. I'm one of the Photoshop guys and here I'm going to help you understand a little bit more about sharpening your images in Adobe Camera Raw. Now one of the first mistakes a lot of people make when they're going to sharpen their image is that they open it up and it may be an image like this and they start applying sharpening to this right here. Well, If you pay attention down here in the corner it says for the best accuracy in this you need to zoom in. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to zoom in preferably to 100%. Now I have a confession to make. This is a picture I took of my sister at her wedding and if I zoomed in on her face at 100% she'd probably kill me so I'm going to choose her husband to do this. Now real quickly if I come back over here and we look at clarity a lot of people confuse clarity with sharpening. Now clarity will give you some sharpening but what it's doing is it's applying a, a contrast to the midtones. It's just simply sharpening one type of area by applying more contrast to it. So I like to add some clarity, but you've got to be careful when you're dealing with people. It tends to make them a little gritty, a little grungy. It's great for textures like buildings and stuff like that, but when you're dealing with people, especially when you're dealing with your sister, you want to make sure these don't make her look too gritty. So I just apply a little bit of clarity and I'm going to do the rest with sharpening. Now let's walk through what these different adjustments are in sharpening. Amount is pretty straightforward, how much sharpening you want. Radius is going to determine how far out each adjustment of that sharpening is going to go. What sharpening is trying to do is find those lines of contrast and boost them to give you more of a delineation between the lines. Radius says, okay, go 1.5 pixels out from these lines of contrast and apply that same setting to it. So the larger the radius, the more impact that sharpening is going to have, how much farther out it's going to go. Whereas detail determines how much stuff it's going to look for, how sensitive it's going to be to applying that. So what it's doing is it's going to create even more and more, in a sense, noise of the sharpening as it adds the details. Sometimes that can be cool, but when you're dealing with faces and people, it can look a little funky. That's where masking comes in, and what masking is looking for is areas of similar tonality to kind of come in and say, no, we don't need to apply that there. You'll notice, especially in his cheeks and over in here, if I drop the masking down, you see all this noise and extra crunchiness that's coming in with the sharpening and right in here, well as I apply the mask it starts smoothing that stuff out because it realizes that you don't want the sharpening applied to that area. And so now you're able to get a sharpening that's sort of just in certain areas, you're kind of fine-tuning it with these four uh, selections. And that looks pretty good. Now you're probably saying, boy it looks a little bit, a little bit granular, it looks like it's kind of a little bit funky. The thing you gotta remember is you're going to either be printing these or displaying them on a computer screen. Either way, you're never going to see the picture this close, this precise. Most of the time when you're dealing with a picture on the web, you're dealing with it like this or maybe a little bit bigger. And you can't even tell that I've done much of a difference between here and here. It's just giving it a little bit of a kick. But now if I'm going to print it, you will print it up at a larger size, but even so, a lot of these little bumps and stuff are going to be blended in because of the printing process. So my little tip to you is to sharpen a little bit more than you think to where it starts to get a little crunchy, a little bit weird, and maybe back off slightly from that, but not too much because it's going to print up better than you think. One other thing I would probably add is, oftentimes, if I'm going to do something like this, well, I like how it's sharpening him, and for a guy, if you add a little texture, a little sharpness, it looks pretty good. But for a girl, oftentimes you're going to be emphasizing things that might not want to be seen. Now, I'd come in and I'd fix some areas in here and use some healing brushes, but oftentimes what I'll do is I will do less sharpening on them here, and then I will come over and grab an adjustment brush, and I will do a local sharpening. What that means is now I can take this brush and I can come over here and I can just add some sharpening to it on an individual basis. 
like I just want to sharpen up his eyes and certain areas just to give him a bump of sharpness and I'm not affecting her. So remember you've got a couple options here. You can apply a sharpness to the entire image or you can get your adjustment brush and simply apply it in one area. But either way, remember bumping up and adding a little extra sharpness to it is probably not going to be a detrimental thing when you're displaying it on the web or you're going to print it up. A little extra sharpness can actually help. So there you go. Real quickly, a nice easy way to understand what sharpening does in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys here at Kelby Media, and I hope that helps you out. Take care.